Bill Haley. William John Clifton Haley, July 6, 1925, February 9, 1981, was an American rock and roll musician. He is credited by many with first popularizing this form of music in the early 1950s with his group Bill Haley and his comets and millions selling hits such as Rock Around the Clock, See You Later, Alligator, Shake, Rattle and Roll, Rocket 88, Skinny Mini, and Razzle Dazzle. He has sold over 60 million records worldwide and has been described as the greatest musical pioneer of the 20th century. Bill Haley was born July 6, 1925 in Highland Park, Michigan, as William John Clifton Haley. In 1929, the four-year-old Haley underwent an inner ear mastoid operation which accidentally severed an optic nerve, leaving him blind in his left eye for the rest of his life. It is said that he adopted his trademark kiss curl over his right eye to draw attention from his left but it also became his gimmick, and added to his popularity. As a result of the effects of the Great Depression on the Detroit area, his father moved the family to Bethel, Pennsylvania, when Bill was seven years old. Haley's father William Albert Haley was from Kentucky and played the banjo and mandolin, and his mother, Ma Green, who was originally from Ulverston in Lancashire, England, was a technically accomplished keyboardist with classical training. Haley told the story that when he made a simulated guitar out of cardboard, his parents bought him a real one. One of his first appearances was in 1938 for a Bethel Junior Baseball Team Entertainment event, performing guitar and songs when he was 13 years old. The anonymous sleeve notes accompanying the 1956 Decca album Rock Around the Clock describe Haley's early life and career. When Bill Haley was 15 circa 1940, he left home with his guitar and very little else and set out on the hard road to fame and fortune. The next few years, continuing this story in a fairy tale manner, were hard and poverty stricken, but crammed full of useful experience. Apart from learning how to exist on one meal a day and other artistic exercises, he worked at an open air park show, sang and yodeled with any band that would have him, and worked with a traveling medicine show. Eventually, he got a job with a popular group known as the Down Homers while they were in Hartford, Connecticut. Soon after this, he decided, as all successful people must decide at some time or another, to be his own boss again, and he has been that ever since. These notes fail to account for his early band, known as the Four Aces of Western Swing. During the 1940s Haley was considered one of the top cowboy yodelers in America as silver yodeling Bill Haley. The sleep notes conclude, for six years Bill Haley was a musical director of radio station WPWA in Chester, Pennsylvania, and led his own band all through this period. It was then known as Bill Haley's Saddleman, indicating their definite leaning toward the tough Western style. They continued playing in clubs as well as over the radio around Philadelphia, and in 1951 made their first recordings on Ed Wilson's Keystone Records in Philadelphia. On June 14, 1951, the Saddleman recorded a cover of Rocket 88. During the Labor Day weekend in 1952, the Saddlemen were renamed Bill Haley with Haley's Comets, inspired by the supposedly official pronunciation of Haley's Comet, a name suggested by WPWA radio station program director, Bob Johnson, where Bill Haley had a live radio program from noon to 1 p.m., and in 1953, Haley's recording of Crazy Man, Crazy, co-written by him and his bass player, Marshall Lytle, although Lytle would not receive credit until 2001 became the first rock and roll song to hit the American charts, peaking at number 15 on Billboard and number 11 on Cashbox. Soon after, the band's name was revised to Bill Haley and his Comets. In 1953, Rock Around the Clock was recorded by Haley. Initially, it was relatively successful, peaking at number 23 on the Billboard Pop Singles chart and staying on the charts for a few weeks. A month later it re-entered at number 1. Haley soon had another worldwide hit with Shake, Rattle and Roll, which went on to sell a million copies and was the first rock and roll song to enter the British singles charts in December 1954, becoming a gold record. He retained elements of the original, which was slow blues, but sped it up with some country music aspects into the song, specifically, Western Swing, and changed up the lyrics. Haley and his band were important in launching the music known as rock and roll to a wider audience after a period of it being considered an underground genre. When Rock Around the Clock appeared as the theme song of the 1955 film Blackboard Jungle starring Glenn Ford, it soared to the top of the American Billboard chart for eight weeks. The single is commonly used as a convenient line of demarcation between the rock era and the music industry that preceded it. 
Billboard separated its statistical tabulations into 1890 to 1954 and 1955 present. After the record rose to number one, Haley was quickly given the title Father of Rock and Roll by the media, and by teenagers who had come to embrace the new style of music. With the song's success, the age of rock music began overnight and ended the dominance of the jazz and pop standards performed by Frank Sinatra, Joe Stafford, Perry Como, Bing Crosby, and others. Nevertheless, in the United Kingdom, Haley was supported by former Dankworth 7 lead vocalist Frank Holder among others. Rock Around the Clock was the first record to sell over one million copies in both Britain and Germany. Later on in 1957, Haley became the first major American rock singer to tour Europe. Haley continued to score hits throughout the 1950s such as See You Later, Alligator and he starred in the first rock and roll musical films Rock Around the Clock and Don't Knock the Rock, both in 1956. Haley was already 30 years old, so he was soon eclipsed in the United States by the younger, sexier Elvis Presley, but continued to enjoy great popularity in Latin America, Europe, and Australia during the 1960s. Bill Haley and the Comets performed Rock Around the Clock on the Texaco Star Theater hosted by Milton Berle on Tuesday, May 31, 1955, on NBC in an a cappella and lip sync version. Berle predicted that the song would go number one, a group of entertainers who are going right to the top. Berle also sang and danced to the song which was performed by the entire cast of the show. This was one of the earliest nationally televised performances via rock and roll band and provided the new musical genre with a much wider audience. Bill Haley and the Comets were the first rock and roll act to appear on the iconic American musical variety series The Ed Sullivan Show on Sunday, August 7, 1955, on CBS in a broadcast that originated from the Shakespeare Festival Theater in Hartford, Connecticut. They performed a live version of Rock Around the Clock with Franny Beecher on lead guitar and Dick Richards on drums. The band made their second appearance on the show on Sunday, April 28, 1957, performing the songs Rudy's Rock and 40 Cups of Coffee. Bill Haley and the Comets appeared on American Bandstand hosted by Dick Clark on ABC twice in 1957, on the primetime show October 28, 1957, and on the regular daytime show on November 27, 1957. The band also appeared on Dick Clark's Saturday Night Beach Nut Show, also known as The Dick Clark Show, a primetime TV series from New York on March 22, 1958, during the first season and on February 20, 1960 performing Rock Around the Clock, Shake, Rattle and Roll, and Tammy Ammy. Bill Haley was married three times. Bill Haley had at least ten children. John W. Haley, his eldest son, wrote Sound and Glory, a biography of Haley. His youngest daughter, Gina Haley, is a professional musician based in Texas. Scott Haley is an athlete. His youngest son Pedro is also a musician. He also had a daughter, Martha Maria from his last marriage with Martha Velasco. Bill Haley Jr., Haley's second son and first with Joan Barbara Cuppy Haley Hahn, publishes a regional business magazine. In February, 2011, he formed a tribute band, performing his father's music and telling the stories behind the songs. An admitted alcoholic, Haley fought a battle with alcohol into the 1970s. Nonetheless, he and his band continued to be a popular touring act benefiting from a 1950s nostalgia movement that began in the late 1960s and the signing of a lucrative record deal with the European sonnet label. After performing for Queen Elizabeth II at the Royal Variety Performance on November 10, 1979, Haley made his final performances in South Africa in May and June 1980. Before the South African tour, he was diagnosed with a brain tumor, and a planned tour of Germany in the autumn of 1980 was cancelled. The October 25, 1980 issue of German tabloid Bild reported that Haley had a brain tumor, quoting British manager Patrick Mellon as saying that Haley had taken a fit, and, didn't recognize anyone anymore after being taken to his home in Beverly Hills, in addition to the paper quoting a doctor that the tumor was inoperable. The Berliner Zeitung reported a few days later that Haley had collapsed after a performance in Texas and was taken to the hospital in his hometown of Harlingen, Texas. His drinking problem was getting worse. By this time, Bill and Martha fought all the time and she told him to stop drinking or move out. He then did move out into a room in their pool house. Martha still took care of him and sometimes, he would come in the house to eat, but he ate very little. There were days we never saw him, said his daughter Martha Maria. In addition to Haley's drinking problems, he was having serious mental problems, as well, 
Martha Maria said, it was like sometimes he was drunk even when wasn't drinking. After he'd been jailed by the Harlingen police, Martha had the judge put Haley in the hospital, where he was seen by a psychiatrist, who said Bill's brain was overproducing a chemical, like adrenaline. The doctor prescribed a medication to stop the overproduction, but said Bill would have Ado stop drinking. Martha said, this is pointless. She took him home, however, fed him and gave him his first dose. As soon as he felt better, he went back out to his room in the pool house, and the downward spiral continued until his passing. Haley's death certificate listed natural causes, most likely heart attack as the immediate cause of death. The next lines, due to, or as a consequence of were blank. Haley made a succession of bizarre, mostly monologue late night phone calls to friends and relatives in which he seemed incoherently drunk or ill. Haley's first wife has been quoted as saying, he would call and ramble and dwell on the past, his mind was really warped. A belligerent phone call to a business associate was taped and gives evidence of Haley's troubled state of mind. Haley was posthumously inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 1987. His son Pedro represented him at the ceremony. He received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame on February 8, 1960, for his contributions to the music industry at 6350 Hollywood Boulevard. The Comets were separately inducted into the Hall of Fame as a group in 2012, after a rule change allowed the induction of backing groups. Songwriters Tom Russell and Dave Alvin addressed Haley's demise in musical terms with Haley's comment on Alvin's 1991 album Blue Boulevard. Dwight Yoakam sang back up on the tribute. Surviving members of the 1954 55 contingent of Haley's Comets reunited in the late 1980s and continued to perform for many years around the world. They released a concert DVD in 2004 on Hydra Records, played the Viper Room in West Hollywood in 2005 and performed at Dick Clark's American Bandstand Theater in Branson, Missouri, beginning in 2006-07. As of 2014, only two members of this particular contingent are still alive, Joey Ambrose and Dick Richards, but they continued to perform in Branson and in Europe. At least two other groups also continue to perform in North America under the Comet's name as of 2014. In March 2007, the original Comets opened the Bill Haley Museum in Munich, Germany. On October 27, 2007, ex-Comets guitar player Bill Turner opened the Bill Haley Museum for the public. In February 2006, the International Astronomical Union announced the naming of asteroid 79,896 Bill Haley to mark the 25th anniversary of Bill Haley's death. Unlike his contemporaries, Bill Haley has rarely been portrayed on screen. Following the success of the Buddy Holly story in 1978, Haley expressed interest in having his life story committed to film, but this never came to fruition. In the 1980s and early 1990s, numerous media reports emerged stating that plants are underway to do a biopic based upon Haley's life, with Bo Bridges, Jeff Bridges and John Ritter all at one point being mentioned as actors in line to play Haley, according to Goldmine magazine, Ritter attempted to buy the film rights to sound and glory. Bill Haley has also been portrayed, not always in a positive light in several period films. Before the formation of Bill Haley and the Saddlemen, which later became the Comets, Haley released several singles with other groups. Dates are approximate due to lack of documentation. As Bill Haley and the Four Aces of Western Swing. 19,481,949. As Johnny Clifton and his string band. 1950. Many Haley discographies list two 1946 recordings by the Downhomers released on the Vogue Records label as featuring Haley. Haley historian Chris Gardner, as well as surviving members of the group, have confirmed that the two singles, Out Where the West Winds Blow, Who's Gonna Kiss You When I'm Gone, Vogue R736, and Boogie Woogie Yodel, Baby I Found Out All About You, Vogue R786, do not feature Haley. However, the tracks were nonetheless included in the compilation box set Rock and Roll Arrives released by Bear Family Records in 2006. Bill Haley recorded prolifically during the 1940s, often at the radio stations where he worked, or in formal studio settings. Virtually none of these recordings were ever released. Liner notes for a 2003 CD release by Hydra Records entitled Bill Haley and Friends Volume 2. The legendary Cowboy recordings reveal that several additional Cowboy label single releases were planned for the Four Aces, but this never occurred. A number of previously unreleased Haley Country Western recordings from the 1946 to 1950 period began to emerge near the end of Haley's life, some of which were released by the RZ label, 
with titles such as Yodel Your Blues Away and Rose of My Heart. Still more demos, alternate takes, and wholly unheard before recordings have been released since Haley's death. Notable examples of such releases include the albums Golden Country Origins by Grassroots Records of Australia and Hillbilly Haley by the British label, Roller Coaster, as well as the aforementioned German release by Hydra Records. In 2006, Bear Family Records of Germany released what is considered to be the most comprehensive, yet still incomplete, collection of Haley's 1946 1950 recordings as part of its Haley box set Rock and Roll Arrives. Bill Haley's compositions included Four Leaf Clover Blues in 1948, Rose of My Heart, Yodel Your Blues Away, Crazy Man, Crazy, What You Gonna Do, Fractured, Live It Up, Farewell, So Long, Goodbye, Real Rock Drive, Rocking Chair on the Moon, Sundown Boogie, Green Tree Boogie, Tear Stains on My Heart, Down Deep in My Heart, Straight Jacket, Birth of the Boogie, Two Hound Dogs, Rock a Beating Boogie, Hot Dog Buddy Buddy, R.O.C.K. Rudy's Rock, Calling All Comets, Tonight's the Night, Hook, Line and Sinker, Sway With Me, Paperboy, On Main Street USA, Skinny Mini, BB Betty, Eloise, Wo Mabel, Beat La Rock and Roll, I've Got News For You, So Right Tonight, Jamaica DJ, Anna Maria, You Get Dan Twist, Football Rock and Roll, Let the Good Times Roll Again in 1979, and Chick Safari in 1960. He also wrote or co-wrote songs for other artists such as I've Got News For You for Penny Smith in 1955 on Cahill, Calypso Rock for Dave Day and the Red Coats on Cap in 1956, Half Your Heart with Robert J. Hayes for Kitty Nation in 1956 on Wing, I Ought On Everything But You for Dottie Malone in 1956 also on Wing, ABC Rock and Rocky the Rocking Rabbit for Sally Starr on Arcade, Toodaloo Bamboo for Ray Coleman and his Skyrockets on Skyrocket Records in 1959. Always Together for the Cook Brothers on Arcade in 1960, Crazy Street for the Maddies Brothers on Coral Records, The Cat for Cappy Bianco, and, You Gotta, Sing for the Ladies and Butterfly Love for Ginger Shannon and Johnny Montana in 1960 on Arcade as well as The Unissued I'm Shook in 1958. NME-October 1955 NME-January 1957 In 1982, Haley's Rock Around the Clock was inducted into the Grammy Hall of Fame. A special Grammy Award established in 1973 to honor recordings ATL East 25 years old and with qualitative or historical significance. In December 2017, Haley was inducted into the Rhythm and Blues Hall of Fame. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.